going to make a really quick cooking fire. Because yeah, we're just going to chili, unless I catch a fish down there, I'll make something else. But I'm just going to heat that chili up. So I don't need a very hot, and I don't need a very high fire or long fire. So I'm just going to have a very quick hot fire. I'm going to push the coals underneath. The fire starts here and then I push the coals underneath there so I'm cooking with with a more even coals rather than rather than uh, hot flame. So good fire starter when it's dry like this is lichen. A couple different kinds here. It's all over the rocks. If it's not in a low dip in the rock then it's off and dry but we've had a dry spell. In fact I'm going to keep the fire low for that reason too. It could be a fire hazard today especially with the wind but the fire pit located so that any sparks would actually blow down in the rocks and the, and the water here so it's a pretty safe spot. So I'm going to go ahead and start this lichen. I like to set up a fire so the fire that you're feeding is out here and you just push coals in underneath your your pot or your grill for cooking and then you can adjust the temperature just by pulling pulling the hot coals out or pushing them back in depending on how much heat you're looking for. See that's too hot right now, that chili's starting to boil away. Let's pull a little bit of that out. I don't need more fire otherwise I just feed more sticks in here build that fire up and keep pushing the coals up, but I'm just going to let that die down. There's more than enough heat in there, this chili is actually just about ready. So that, that's a, and if you don't, you don't actually need a grill very often, unless you have multiple pots on there, a couple of flat rocks that you can put a pot, um, rest the pot on is good enough. One less thing you have to carry. just breaking open a piece of freshwater mussel here. I've eaten these things in the past, especially on a trip where I don't bring as much food, I'm living off the land. But they don't taste very good and you have to clean them really well. And they can be actually bad for you because they do filter contaminants, pollutants. So they can concentrate those. I don't typically eat them, but they are fairly good for bait. So I'm just baiting up a hook here and I'm gonna toss it in by the weeds behind me. It's a uh, school of smallmouth bass chasing minnows in there. I've already caught a couple of small ones, small bass, and one big one, which I had to let go. But I'm going to throw this in and watch the bass fight over it. I'll probably hook one. And you'll see a couple of other bass maybe chasing the first bass, trying to get um, get the morsel out of its mouth. So I'm going to give this a shot again. the two different kinds of blueberries growing next to each other. See the lighter green glossier leaf. Lighter berry. I find them not quite as sweet. I think that's pretty typical. I don't think it's just me. So there's the lighter. Lighter ones and right next to it you have this darker green plants, a little less glossy. And there's a berry from it, so you can see darker ones from that bush. So here we have blueberries and juniper berries right beside each other. So the juniper berries. Show you, show you what they look like inside. So it's darker and obviously grows on junipers, but it's got a pit inside, a, a seed, I mean. So, and it's tart, it's like gin. Oh, 
your fly. And if you, I cook, like to cook with those, but you can also chew them. They're tart, like I said, but they're still kind of tasty. But nothing like the blueberries.